so thank you all for, for coming. For coming. Uh, we promise it won't take long. We are all tired, uh, probably. So yeah, let's just start and do this. Yeah, we'll do a short update. Um, so to introduce ourselves, I'm Marcin. I'm working on Kubernetes dashboard project since uh, basically the very beginning. Um, yeah, at the moment, uh, I'm one of the CUI co-leaders. Um, yeah. And I'm Sebastian. Uh, I'm also working basically from the beginning on the project. And I'm currently software engineer at uh, Plural and also one of the co-leaders in the CUI. And yeah, our, our agenda for today is basically do the, um, the project background, so very short one, um, key changes. So the new architecture that we um, uh, recently adopted, um, then we will talk about the standalone API, uh, so the, how we moved it to be like a standalone one, basically API that you can reuse and the resource list cache that we uh, introduced just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, then we'll talk uh, shortly about some user experience enhancements and future roadmap and then maybe some questions if you will have any. Um, yeah, so uh, to give like short uh, project background. So Kubernetes dashboard is there from around uh, 2015. So the first commit was done in 2015. Right now we have uh, version uh, 7.9.0, which was released uh, in October. Um, and it provides support for Kubernetes uh, version 1.31. Um, we uh, get about like eight millions uh, image pools uh, every month. And the number of uh, total image pools is like really big, which is over 1.1 billion. Um, yeah, so as Sebastian said, uh, we wanted to go through uh, key changes that we've uh, we have done recently. So um, this, uh, like the new architecture, we spoke about it uh, like so, so some time ago, but it took actually some time to complete. So uh, what we did is like previously, uh, Kubernetes dashboard was uh, application which was running inside one container. And this was uh, our API and UI, um, but uh, we have uh, split it into multiple containers uh, that can be reused. So the, uh, the one that can be most useful is uh, our API. Um, yeah, so we have a container for UI, API. We also have metric scraper, which was previously hosted uh, in a Kubernetes 6 organization. Right now it's part of the main uh, Kubernetes dashboard repository. We also have uh, authentication container. Um, yeah, and as you can see, besides all of uh, these uh, four containers, we also, uh, our deployment also uh, contains a gateway at the moment. Um, it's only temporary. We plan to, uh, plan to update it uh, in some time. It's on, it's on our roadmap. Um, yeah, so uh, this, uh, this feature is already completed and it's part of our latest release. Yep. And the next thing is, um, yeah, the standalone API. So uh, thanks to the changes that we've done and thanks to actually making the API uh, completely separate, we can uh, now, like for example, use it uh, everyone can use it, but we also like use it internally. Right now at Plural uh, doing um, basically multi-cluster uh, management thanks to that. So uh, this is like architecture that you can also use with the dashboard API uh, where it will basically have the OIDC support where you log in um, and 
uh, for example, how we use it is that we have like CAS agent, this is GitLab open source stuff also, uh, that uh, from the cluster, inside the cluster, talk to the CAS server, dashboard API connects to the CAS server. Uh, it doesn't know exactly about the multi-clusters uh, support, it just serves the whatever uh, basically it, it needs to get. Um, and yeah, this is one of the many use cases that are now possible with just the standalone API. You can build new front end for that. Basically, yeah, this is like more flexible and uh, can be used by, by the community. You know. Yeah, and what's important, uh, that enables like multi-cluster use case. Yeah. So uh, the front end, our front end, uh, like Kubernetes dashboard front end, is not yet prepared to handle that but uh, thanks to the dashboard API, um, you can already like query multi-cluster, uh, multi-clusters, multiple clusters. Okay. Yeah, and that's, uh, uh, Sebastian just presented uh, how our use case works, and this is our dashboard at Plural that we've implemented using uh, Kubernetes dashboard API. So as you can see, it's already possible, and if you want, you can reuse Kubernetes dashboard API to create your own front end that will like suit your, your needs. Uh, in our case, as you can see, we have like a selector for a cluster and then inside the cluster, um, it's, uh, uh, we list all the resources and we have like resource list, resource details, basically everything that uh, like Kubernetes dashboard API uh, re like presents returns. Okay, uh, I will start with the next feature. So the next big one is resource list cache. So I think this is one of the most important ones that we've did um, even in our like entire uh, history. So uh, this was like big pain point because every time uh, like request uh, to Kubernetes dashboard uh, API was made, we needed to download the whole resource list to apply pagination, sorting, and filtering because Kubernetes dashboard API, uh, Kubernetes API does not allow that. And Kubernetes API basically allows for pagination, but not uh, for all of this combined at the same moment. So uh, we were downloading the whole list, then applying all the data select uh, logic to it, and then returning the data back. But uh, this was basically applying a lot of pressure on uh, Kubernetes uh, API server. Um, yeah, so we were thinking how we can solve that, uh, that issue. And um, yeah, we came up with a solution for that. So the, benefit, the benefits that uh, it gives us, for, uh, for sure, it's like reduced lat latency. So, Right now we see the uh, response times uh, being like much, much smaller. I think it's like five, uh, five times smaller, even, even more, I think. Yeah, depending on the size of the cluster and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so this also like uh, enhances user experience because you do not have to wait uh, every time you like, uh, even when the, uh, like resource list is paginated. Previously, every time the page was changed, we needed to download uh, all the resources. Then to this, like return just a batch for this page. So right now we get all of this data from our resource cache. Um, it also like optimizes resource utilization because Kubernetes API server um, is not queried that often by us. Uh, we get a lot of data from resource cache. Um, yeah, and it's uh, opt out feature. So if you don't want to use it, if you w would like to keep the current like behavior, um, it's obviously possible. We also like introduce um, some configuration options like uh, the size of cache and few others. So the trade-offs that we see is like using cache and network uh, can result in slightly stale data sometimes. Uh, 
Yeah, it, the, the reason basically we went for that is because of how the architecture of the dashboard is, and the dashboard has no permissions to your cluster at all itself, and it always dynamically basically relies on the permissions of the like user that token or any other like uh, basically information you provide that we can use for authentication. So that's why we have to create like client on the fly and because of that the only basically viable way to do the caching was this cache network. Yeah, yeah. and also um, at the moment uh, we see increased uh, average memory consumption so this is obviously caused by uh, cache that's living in the uh, API uh, memory, but uh, like we also see, on the other hand, a decreased peak memory usage because cache is like taking the pressure of uh, of the of the API. And yeah, so we've run a several like tests uh, for the new cache solution. This is just some. Uh, basically image uh, one of those. And the test scenario that is the example here was CRD list on our dev cluster that has around 250 CRDs. CRDs are obviously very big resources, uh, in our case also quite big. Uh, so the memory footprint normally is also quite high. Uh, we did it with 50 virtual users and like fixed request rate. So uh, without cache, like average response time, as you can see, was 36 seconds. That's because uh, basically how dashboard previously worked without cache is that every request, if it's done in parallel, it will uh, in parallel call the Kubernetes API server. <laughs> so the pressure on the API server was uh, enormous. And it was struggle to actually return the data to the dashboard itself. But right now, uh, the way we optimize the cache also is that the first request to the dashboard will uh, make the request to the API server. Uh, the other requests that are done in parallel to the dashboard will wait. And once the API server actually returns the data and data is cached, it will return it from cache. So there is basically only one request there. And yeah, thanks to that, the, the response times are significantly uh, better. And also amount of requests that you can actually do uh, in, in like the test time that we've done is also so, uh, so much bigger. And this is like very simplified architecture on, of the cache. Uh, how we do that is um, we initialize cache based on the um, query, so like path that user wants to uh, get. We only do that for lists uh, right now. Probably like uh, getting single objects is not that, uh, like doesn't require really, really caching. Uh, lists do obviously, so we use the, uh, like the path as the cache key, plus um, um, we also what else, what there? Um, um, label selector, yeah. uh, field oh, selector. List so options. So everything that's part of the list options, request. Right. Yeah. And we do like a, a SHA of all of that. This is our key uh, in the end. And before we actually allow the user to get the data from the cache, we do the self subject access review for this. Uh, and if the API server says that it is allowed, the user is allowed to get the data, then we only return from cache. So this is uh, basically the only way to, to get the data from cache. Otherwise, it will like, try to get it from the API. Uh, but if it says it's denied, obviously, we'll just return like uh, denied error. And uh, the API also, like we said, supports um, basically like multi-cluster. And the way we had to deal, uh, like make cache support this kind of like uh, multi-cluster uh, caching was we've had to add some kind of information to the key itself that would allow us to ensure that the data being like asked by the, the user will be let return like from the correct cache saved for the correct cluster. And the way we, uh, we thought thought this will be the best is by using some kind of external API that 
you basically create and you give us some kind of unique ID based uh, on the token that you uh, already provided, uh, so the, the user token authorization token. You give us some kind of unique ID. This ID uh, has to be unique per cluster, and like you have control, uh, basically. We trust that your API will be, uh, can be trusted, <laughs> of course, and will like, give us a unique ID that we can save, like uh, together with the key, shut everything, and then use as key cache. And yeah, this allows us to work in a multi-cluster environment with cache also. And yeah, and uh, besides that, we've added a couple of uh, user experience enhancements. So uh, as you can see, like to go shortly, uh, quickly to, through the list, ingress path, uh, paths are rendered as links in uh, UI. About page was uh, removed and it's now replaced by footer that's visible across the application. Um, default resource auto refresh time interval was uh, increased to 10 seconds. We've added a username to user info panel. Um, also like uh, we've added uh, delete, uh, support for de delete propagation policy, which was I think requested multiple times. Also, uh, owner ref information uh, is now part of the object meta tab. And uh, all namespaces can now be hidden uh, in namespace drop dropdown list. Mm, besides that, um, there is like one uh, security improvement that we wanted to mention. So right now, setting safe relies on user permissions instead of dashboard permissions, which is uh, important. Um, and other than that, we have improved pod container status logic to keep it uh, with in sync with kubectl, because otherwise, uh, yeah, it uh, like uh, can be confusing. Uh, we have rewritten uh, setting logic during uh, architecture changes, and also added a small script to index HTML to dynamically generate tags. Um, and here's uh, our roadmap. So, as you can see, we've uh, already are past splitting uh, in application into separate modules. Uh, also, we've uh, finished adding cache. And the thing that we have partly done is adding node cordon and drain functionality. Partly done means that this is already added to our API. We just need to add UI for that. Um, the next things that we want to do are like uh, Angular material had breaking changes. And to follow the latest version, we need to do the update, which will take probably a while. Perhaps um, uh, also when doing a material update, we will be able to create this design system. So that's the change that we want to do to abstract components that we that we are using so when there will when and if we will want to change something in front and in the future it will be easier to do um, we also want to provide support for gateway api so right now we are using kong but we want to give more freedom to users so by supporting gateway api users will uh, be able to choose which uh, which gateway uh, they want to use. Do you want to do? Yeah, I can go. And next parts are added first party support for OIDC, uh, which is also something that was long time uh, requested. Uh, dashboard supports technically like OIDC through reverse proxy. Of course, but adding first party support is always uh, like better and should be easier to use uh, for the users. Um, then next part is supporting more metrics providers. Uh, right now we have metrics scraper, which is technically only allows like seeing metrics from like last 15 minutes. If you change the configuration, you can like scrape like uh, metrics from a longer period of time, but uh, it's not really a replacement for something like uh, Victoria metrics, Prometheus, and then basically a product that uh, can use like PromQL. Uh, so we would want to add support for that so that uh, you can actually see more 
not only this basic stuff. And the last thing is adding support for new uh, resources that uh, have like, have been added to the Kubernetes itself. So Gateway APIs is also one of them, so to show them in the UI, uh, so and be in sync with kubectl basically also uh, a bit more here. And yeah, this is plan for the future. So are there any questions?